That was pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Dawn. Thank you very much. Um, service today, welcome, first of all, to Living Hope Lutheran Church. Welcome to all of you here, but also to you, all of you who are joining us in cyberspace. Thank you very much for joining us and worshiping with us today. Uh, we're going to finish off our sermon series, The One Foundation, building our lives on Jesus Christ, on his death, on his resurrection. What does that mean? What does it look like? And probably today we're going to have, we're going to talk about the most difficult thing of all. And that's learning to forgive. And every single one of us here and can recount times when someone hurt us so very deeply that it was very difficult for us to look them in the eye, to love them again, to forgive them. And we're going to talk a little bit about what that looks like, what that means, how we do that. Uh, service is printed for you in the program, or you can find it online at our website, or you can find it it will be posted in the live feed, uh, so you can join, follow along with worship there. Uh, we begin our service by singing, It is well with my soul. Let's stand and join together in song this morning. Lord's blessings on your worship.
Almighty God, before whose presence the angels veil their faces, with reverence and love we acknowledge your glory and worship you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, eternal Trinity. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. We join the verse. that when we come before the Lord God in worship that we would acknowledge the fact that we have not always been the children of God that he would have us be, that we have sinned against him, broken his law. And so we confess our sins and ask for his mercy, for his forgiveness. And, and of course, he gives it. So this is we confess our sins. O holy and most merciful Father, we confess that from birth our sinful nature has made us unfit to stand before you, what is more, we have broken your law repeatedly in our thoughts, words, and actions. So often we do the evil you forbid and fail to do the good you command. You know our hearts and our lives, Lord. We are guilty and deserve only to be condemned. But at your gracious word, we come to you and plead, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, Blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquity. The Lord, our gracious Father, has forgiven all your sins through the life and death of his one and only Son, Jesus the Christ. With his resurrection from death, he has given you the sure hope of everlasting life. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. So go now and leave the life of sin and produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds. Praise your Father who is in heaven. Amen. Amen. We join in the joy of that forgiveness with the verses of amazing grace. <laughs> Just a note on the service, those of you who are joining us online, we will be taking your prayer requests, so please post those in the live feed and we'll pray through those prayer requests in a little bit. We hear God's word today, and he speaks to us about forgiveness, and our first lesson comes, uh, comes from Genesis chapter 50. Joseph's brothers had done some pretty nasty things to him. He sold them into slavery. 
lied to his dad, uh, pretended like he was dead, and treat Joseph very well. Yet in the end, God brings them back together again. As he brings them back together, the brothers realize that Joseph might just take vengeance on them for the bad things that they did. But I want you to listen to what Joseph, moved by God's own forgiveness and God's own love, does. Genesis chapter 50, beginning at verse 15. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, What if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for the wrongs we did to him? So they sent word to Joseph, saying, Your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. The message came to him, Joseph left. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish the, what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Next lesson talks not about so much us forgiving others as much as God forgiving you and me. We're going to talk a little bit about the difference there. When you think about the fact that someone hurt you, it's hard to forgive, right? Yet how much has God forgiven us? Right? And what did it cost God to forgive you and me? Romans Romans chapter 8, beginning at the first verse. This is what is written. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you, has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us. We do not live according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We confess our faith with Christians all over the world by confessing, uh, by saying together the Nicene Creed. We confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We join together in our next hymn. It's sort of our theme hymn for the last few weeks, The Church's One Foundation. Let's stand and join together in song. <laughs>
Amen. bow our heads we, we say a prayer Lord we come today to meditate we come today to hear your word we come today to be strengthened to be encouraged to be built up pray that by your spirit by your word you would work on our hearts and our minds Lord and shape and fashion us into your children help us to understand your great love and your great forgiveness for us in Jesus name we pray Amen. My brothers, my sisters, it's probably, probably one of the most difficult things to do and to do well is to say you're sorry and then the other person to actually forgive you and mean it. Remember when you were children and, you know, you'd, your sister comes up and she stomps on your Lego space station that you've been working on all morning, smashes it to smithereens. You're like, what? And do anything. What are you stomping on my... You go to mom. Ma, sister stomped on my Lego space station and I didn't do anything. Mom calls sister over and sister says, why? mom asks sister, why did you stomp on... She goes, I don't know. Well, tell your brother that you're sorry. Filled with attitude and resentment and anger that you are, you have to demean yourself into saying you're sorry for doing something mean to your brother. And then the brother's turn is to forgive. And what does the brother say back? Whatever. <laughs> or fine. Because what, what choice does brother have? He doesn't really want to forgive. She just stomped on the space station, and it's clear she doesn't mean that she's sorry. You can see it in her, vo in her face and hear it in her voice. So I'm not going to forgive, but I have to because mom's standing there, and I'm more afraid of mom than anything else. So I'm going to say, say the words, but I'm not going to mean it. And then we grow up and we learn how to do it, right? Maybe we get better at it. Hopefully we get better at it. But it's always a struggle, isn't it? Maybe we learn to fix our face so that we don't cut our eyes and, and, and look at each other like we're evil and angry and suspicious of them. Maybe we learn how to change the tone of our voice so it actually sounds like we're sorry. And maybe in some cases we do actually forgive in our heart if it's not so bad, if... If it's the first time they've done it, if there's a good reason for doing <coughs> the bad thing, or if it's a little kid, you know, you got to forgive. But our hearts often still hold resentment. The heart, the eyes of our heart are still cut, and we give each other suspicious looks through our heart. Maybe not with our physical eyes, but these ones. And we still hold back a little bit of forgiveness because they might hurt us again. They might do it again. They're going to stomp on my goodwill. Here I am magnanimously forgiving them, and they might just do it all again, so I need to make them suffer to make sure that they don't do it again and learn their lesson. I need to make sure that my heart doesn't hurt again, because that hurt deep. So I'm going to make them suffer just a little bit, or maybe I... I will make them squirm for a while, or maybe I will add a few things in to make sure that they're really serious. Or if we're, we're really manipulative, I'm going to use this to my advantage and get something out of it. We, forgiveness is hard. And hopefully as adult Christians, we have learned to do it a little bit better, but it's always a challenge. To deal with the cut that was deep deal with the hurt that was done again, to deal with the pain that someone that you trusted caused. We've been talking about building our lives on the one foundation, Jesus Christ, on his death, on his resurrection, on the sacrifice that he made. 
build our, our future, our hope, our dreams on it. We build our eternity on it. We build our family, our marriages, our friendships, our career on Jesus Christ, on his blood. We've talked about what that looks like and what do some of those things mean. And last week, Jesus was talking to his disciples and he said that part of, part of following him, part of being his disciple is that sometimes our brother, our sister goes astray. And it is our job as his brothers and sisters to go talk to them about the sins, about the mistakes, about the path that they're taking. And as much as we may not want to do it, Jesus says, remember that you are my child and so are they. And that makes you brother and sister and you are your brother's keeper. So if your brother sins against you, go and what? Show him his fault. Our text today follows right on that same conversation. And Peter asks a logical question. And that logical question that Peter asks leads to a whole parable from Jesus. A wonderful parable. A terrible parable. A difficult one. And we're going to read it through in sections. Building on the one foundation, Lord, teach us to forgive as you forgive. This is our text. Matthew chapter 18. I'm going to read verses 21 and 22. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you not seven times, but 77 times. Peter's question is logical, right? You tell me, Jesus, that when my brother sins against me, I need to go and talk to him about it. That implies there that we need to forgive Peter is being actually being very generous. Sometimes he's given a hard time here. But seven times, the rabbis, the religious teachers, the, in, in Peter's day said you get to forgive three times. You have to forgive three times. Then you can seek retribution. Peter understood that Jesus' expectation of mercy was far greater than the world's, than, than the other teachers. And so he, he rightly says, well, how about seven times? But it wasn't enough, was it? God's expectation of forgiveness is so great. His idea of mercy is so beyond human understanding. He says not seven times, but is Jesus saying that once you get to 78, you get to slug him in the nose? That's not his point, right? The point is keep going, keep forgiving on and on and on. Almost without end, without end, actually. Forgive and and. And that's their sinful nature doesn't like that. It hears that and it wants to put limits on forgiveness. Is there a time when I would be justified in withholding forgiveness for my brother? Is there a time when it would be reasonable and rational for me to hold back mercy on somebody? And Jesus tells us a parable that says there is not. God's forgiveness is beyond anything else. And as his children, we forgive the same way. Listen to the parable that Jesus tells. I'm going to read the next couple of verses here. 23 to 25. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man owed him uh, 10,000 talents. Who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. So I don't know what this servant did. This magistrate, this, 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 this servant of the king. Somehow he had misused, lost, misappropriated 10,000 talents of the king's money. This is an enormous amount of money. Enormous. Uh, all right, take out your phones for me. We're going to do a little math. All right. You can't take out your phone in church. Well, I'm telling you to take out your phone. So take out your phone, open up to the calculator. We don't really understand the 10,000 talents. And I don't think Jesus really wants us to get stuck on the particulars, but we're going to get stuck on the particulars. So um, 10,000 talents. All right. So what, what is that? Well, we're going to break it down into denarii. All right. So there's 6,000 denarii in one talent. So multiply 10,000 by 6,000. What do you get? 60 million. Okay, so 60 million denarii. 
A denarii is one day's wage, a typical day's wage. So this man would have to work for 60 million days to repay this debt. All right, let's break it down even further. Let's, let's make it something more we can comprehend. So per day, let's try and make it a year, year's worth, right? So um, Jews work six days a week, 52 weeks in the year, 312 then days, work days in a year. So divide 60 million by 312, what do you get? 192,000 years of work, all right? That's how much they would have to do in order to repay this debt. It is beyond his ability to repay. What's a typical salary in the United States, an average salary in the United States? 50,000, does that sound right? So multiply 192,000 by 50,000. What do you get? Nine billion six hundred million. So you have to be filthy, filthy, filthy rich. I don't even. Is Jeff Bezos worth that much? Is he? All right. So you have to be Jeff Bezos rich in order to pay back this debt. In other words, there is nothing that this servant could ever do to repay the king because the debt was so big, there is no scheme he could come up with, no amount of hard work that he could do that would ever be, enable him to pay back the debt that this person owed the king. Well, who's the king? God. And who's the servant? Me. <laughs> Peter. Us. And sticking with the picture, everything that we have was given to us by God. It all belongs to him, just as the 10,000 talents belong to the king and the servant misused it, misappropriated. When we stop and we think about all the things that God has given to us, how much have we, how often haven't we misused what God has given to us? Money and stuff, mistreated, lost, abused, the things, the money that God has given to us, wasted it. The debt. But it's not just money and stuff. It's the people that God puts in our lives too, right? Children and parents, spouses, neighbors, friends, co-workers. How, have, how often haven't we mistreated them or abused them or told them things or done things to them that we are ashamed of that we shouldn't have done? Or abuse the relationship that we had with them for our own advantage. And the debt starts to pile up. And it's not just money and stuff. And it's not just the people that God gives to us. It's this temple, this very gift that God has given to us. The body that we have, the skills, the talents that God gives to us. How often haven't we abused this body? And used it for things that are not right with the Lord God Almighty. How often have we... Have we uh, not taking advantage of the guilt, skills and the gifts that God has given to us and the guilt, the debt gets bigger. But it's not just money and stuff and it's not just the people and it's not just this temple. It's the time that he gives to me. The energy that he pours into my heart. The wisdom that he gives me. Now often haven't I wasted it or abused it or mistreated the time that I have and the energy that God has given me. And the debt is up here. The only way that the servant can get out of it and the only way that you and I can get out from under our debt to the Almighty God is if God just takes it away. With me? Listen to what he said. Verses 26 27. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. Can't. He can't do it. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. The king took it away. 
not because of anything other than the fact that the king was a merciful, gracious king who had pity on his servant, who looked at his servant and said, there is nothing that this person can ever do, so I'm going to forgive the debt that he has given, that he has. And notice, about, notice a couple things about it. He didn't just say, I'm not going to punish you. The right punishment for what happened was that he and all he had and his whole family would be sold off to pay the debt. That was the punishment. The king didn't say, well, I'm not going to sell your stuff and all your family into slavery, but you still owe me the 10,000 talents and I expect regular payment. And just to show you, just, just because you still owe me this, I got this nasty job that I need you to do for me that no one else wants not to do. He didn't hold it over his head. He forgave even the very debt and treated the servant as if the debt was never even there. Not just taking away the punishment, but taking away the very debt. And this was a declaration that the king made. This was not something that took time. This was not something that he had to earn. This was not something that had conditions. It was a simple declaration, full and free. You are forgiven. There is no more payment. It is done. It is finished. It's an amazing thing. God does the same for you and me sins that are piled up and the debt that we have towards him. He forgives it full and free. He doesn't just take away the punishment that is hell, that is his wrath. He doesn't just say, I'm not going to send you to hell, but you still owe me, and this is what you better do for me if you really are want to be my servant. He takes away the threat of hell, and then he takes away the very debt of our sin through Jesus on the cross, and he treats us as children of God, not as debtors to him, but as creditors, as sons in his own house. As if the debt was never even there, he treats us as his righteous, perfect children. He is pleased with us. He doesn't use it to manipulate us. He doesn't use it and hold it over our heads. He doesn't sort of forgive us because... It's a big debt, but you know, all right, fine, fine, whatever. Forgives. Full and free. Notice the king never says that it, the debt was no big deal, does he? 10,000 talents is a lot of money. It's a big debt. And so God also never says that it's okay that you have sinned. Never says that. Sin is not okay. Whenever we sin against the Lord God Almighty, this is not just eh, whatever. It's bad. It's bad. No matter how small we think it is, sin is bad. And yet God doesn't say, doesn't forgive us because it's no big deal. He forgives us because he is gracious and merciful. And that's important. It's important because sometimes we have trouble understanding that we ourselves are forgiven. guilt and, and shame and can't believe that I did X, Y, and Z. Right? And yet God declares, declares us to be forgiven. And even when I don't believe it, even when I don't feel it, it's still true. Sometimes you'll hear people say stuff like, well, you have to allow yourself to be forgiven. I understand what people are saying when they say stuff like that, but it really has nothing to do with allowing yourself to be forgiven because you're forgiven whether you believe it or not, and that's really what it is. God has forgiven you. He has declared it. Even if you don't feel it, it's true. Believe it. God has forgiven you free, full, 100%. No strings attached, no limitations, no expectations. And that freedom that comes from knowing that I am forgiven of all of my debt, that it has been taken away, and I stand as God's dearly loved, forgiven children, nothing held against me whatsoever, because he held it all against Christ, full and free in God's presence, chains, fills me with a different set of feelings towards my fellow man and towards my brothers and sisters. It changes my attitude towards me. At least it ought to. 
listening to what happened. 2831. When the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him, began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, Be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. The other servants saw what had happened. They were greatly distressed and went and told the master everything that had happened. So the servant goes out just forgiven of this incredible debt that he could never pay back. And he finds a second servant who owes him 100 denarii. 100 denarii, this, this is not a small amount. This is three months' wages. So it's not like this is no big deal. It is a big deal. And yet, God, we can sense that Jesus still wants that first servant to forgive the debt of the second servant. When people hurt us, when people sin against us, forgiveness is not saying that it's no big deal and it doesn't matter. It does matter. And Jesus, by saying it's a hundred denarii, almost seems to imply that forgiving somebody is hard and that this is a difficult thing and that it does hurt. But as children of the Almighty God, we are still expected, just as Jesus, just as God forgives me, to forgive my brothers and sisters, regardless of what it might be, full and free. A declaration made, no strings attached, no limitations, no expectations, forgiven. That's hard. But understand that as God has forgiven you, as God loves me, as his child, then God calls me to love and to forgive my fellow man. It's part of building our life on Jesus Christ, on the cross, on the resurrection, on the forgiveness of sins, is to forgive. God forgave us knowing full well that we would probably abuse his grace and his goodness. God forgave us knowing full well that we would probably do it again. But he forgave us because he loved us. God forgave us even of the sins that we haven't repented of yet. And so in the same way, of love for our fellow man that is created by the love of the Almighty God, we forgive our brothers and sisters, not because they have groveled properly, not because they didn't mean it, not because it was no big deal or it didn't hurt, not because we're convinced that they won't do it again, not even because they have asked for it. We forgive them out of love for them, the same love that God has for them and for me. That's grace. Do they deserve it? Nowhere in any of this have we ever talked about deserve, have we? If we start talking about deserve, what's the problem? What's the problem? It starts to get real funny between me and God. Right? Amen? Amen? I'm not done, sorry. Don't think I'm done with the sermon. I'm almost done. Give me two minutes. So I want you to repeat after me. Forgive. Yes. Full and free. Full and free. No, strings attached. no strings attached. No limitations. No limitations. No expectations. No expectations. But a declaration. Let's try again. Forgive. Forgive. Full and free. Full and free. No strings. No strings. No limits. No limits. No expectations. No expectations. But a declaration. But a declaration. Remember Dylan Roof? Remember him? I think it was five years ago or so. He went into that uh, into a church in South Carolina and he was a white supremacist. It was a congregation there, and he, and he shot up uh, 
killed nine black people in hatred. Um, he was sentenced, and at his sentencing, the family members of the nine people who died were given an opportunity to talk about the pain and the suffering that they endured. And every single one of them talked about how awful the deed was, about the hatred and the evil that had taken place, and how much it hurt to, to lose the ones that they loved. But every single one of those Christians stood in the courtroom, and I think, I'm almost positive, that the first thing that all nine families said was, Mr. Roof, I forgive you. Lord, help us to forgive Help me to be like you, full and free, no limits, no strengths, no expectations, but a declaration of love and forgiveness as you have done to me. For Jesus' sake. Let's stand and join together in our next song. It's, it's the first song of Isaiah. by bringing our offerings to the Lord. Offering plate is in the back. Um, just a reminder, those of you online, please post your prayer requests in the live feed and we'll pray through those in just a moment. We bring our offerings to the Lord.
Uh, thank you to everyone who continues to support the ministry of Living Hope Lutheran Church. Really appreciate it through all of this. Um, also, just encouraging online giving. If you want to do that, you can go to our website and there's a donate button. So you can take advantage of that. <coughs> Continue with our prayers today. Special prayers have been requested uh, for our sister Di, uh, Di Jordan. She's not feeling real great. The last week she's been kind of weak and uh, tired, so we will pray for her. Pray for a friend of the Casey's whose house is about half a mile from the fires up by Fort Collins. Uh, they just built the house, and it seems likely that they're going to lose it, so we will pray for a miracle there. Pray for our sister Jay, who is wrestling with cancer, battling cancer. Good news this last week, um, but it's going to be a challenge, yeah. right? Jesus opens the door. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, it's stage two, so it hasn't spread. So we're glad for that, but it will require major surgery. So we will remember. Also remember a friend of Ellery Donald who has inoperable cancer. Uh, humanly speaking, he's in his last days. We know that God can do all things, but uh, we will pray for Donald. We also pray for our sister Alex, who's celebrating a birthday tomorrow. And she turns the big 3-0, right? Yeah, Ma, you're feeling old. Your, your baby is turning 30. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right. Any other prayer requests today? Yes, Miss Maria. Okay. Say that again. I, I don't think it's going to be a very comfortable procedure. Okay. I'm, a, I'm a little worried. All right. We will pray for a calm heart and blessings, right? And a good result. It was done, yeah. Um, our nephew uh, is nine months old. His name is Theodore. He had to go to the hospital because he had a bad infection uh, on Friday. So just pray for him. Okay. We'll pray for Theodore. Yeah, the purpose. Yes, Miss Carol. We have a mutual friend, her name is Jamie, and her husband, Joseph, uh, just for diagnosis of stomach cancer. Okay. All right, we'll bring Joseph to prayer. Yes, Miss Jane. Who would we pray for baby snows? I would even get snow. To put out the fire, you mean? Yes. All right, we will get snow. Yes. I don't know about the snow. I. You know me, I, 92 degrees is about my perfect temperature, but uh, yeah. Anyway, online, yeah. But we will pray that the Lord will put the fires out in the way that he so chooses, right? Um, Tammy Johnson has a friend uh, who's also having a biopsy tomorrow, so we'll remember Nancy. Uh, Matthew Davis' cousin. Uh, cancer has returned, so all right, we will pray for Jackson. Um, uh, thank you for sports and Denver's professional teams. All right, we will pray for that. Thank God for for the for the escape. Right, the escape to just throw yourself. Anyway, okay. Uh, Ted Calvert's granddaughter's second anniversary. All right. Thanks on behalf of Janelle and Jeanette and Chris. Right, let's stand, join together in prayer. Um, take note in the program. We're going to sing some verses before and after. So let's let's. Go to our Lord God in prayer.
Heavenly Father, give you thanks for loving us enough to forgive us, for loving enough us enough to send your Son to pay our debt that we might be debt-free. Teach us, Lord, to live in joy, in the joy of your forgiveness, in the joy of your salvation. Teach us to love our brothers and sisters enough to forgive them as well. Whatever the sin may be, however deep the wound is, teach us, Lord, to love as you love and to forgive as you do. We bring you, Lord God, some special prayers and we remember those who are struggling with their health. Commit them to your care because you, because you, Lord God, love us more than anyone. You do not desire to see us struggle, to see us suffer, to be as in pain. So we pray, Lord God, that you would be with, with our brothers, our sisters, our friends, our relatives. Heal them, Lord God. Ease their pain. Strengthen their faith in you. We think of our sister Di. We pray, Lord God, that you would strengthen her. Be with her, Lord God, to make her strong again. We think of our sister Jay as she faces cancer and surgery. We thank you first for making it only stage two. Thank you for finding a way forward through this. Pray, Lord God, that you would bless her surgery, bless her doctors. Same with Donald, Lord God. We pray that you would be with him as he battles cancer. Pray, Lord God, that you would ease his pain and his suffering. That if it is your will, that you would perform a miracle and heal him. That if it is your will, Lord God, that his life should end, we pray that he would find comfort and confidence in your promises and the tomb and the gift of eternal life in heaven, Lord God. Pray for those who are, pray for Theodore, who is in the hospital battling an infection. Pray, Lord God, that you would heal him and bring him home, calm mom and dad's hearts, Lord God, and know that the one that they love uh, is in your care. Pray for Joseph, um, um, who also has, who has stomach cancer. Pray, Lord God, that you would comfort him and take away his cancer. Heal him, Lord God. Pray for our sister Maria and also for Jackson. Um, uh, well, uh, Nancy, both who are going in for biopsies. Pray, Lord God, that you would be with Nancy and Maria, both of them. Calm their hearts, help them to know that they are in your care. Pray that you would make the procedure go well and smooth, not pain, or painless, Lord God. Pray even more, Lord God, that the results would come back that there is no cancer. We commit both Nancy and Maria to your care. Pray for Jackson, whose cancer has returned. Pray, Lord God, that you would uh, heal him, take away his cancer, Lord God. He's having a rough time, Lord God. Calm his heart. Help him to know that he is loved by Jesus, Lord. Be with Jackson. And calm him and, and bless him, Lord. We give you thanks, Lord, for the 30 years of life that you have given to our sister Alex. Pray, Lord God, that you would continue to bless her and watch over her. Pray that you would fill her heart with joy and the recognition of the blessings that you have showered on her. Pray also give you thanks, Lord God, for the two years of marriage that you have given to Jeanette and Chris. Pray, Lord God, that you would continue to bless their marriage and make it strong. Fill it with love and hope and commitment and joy and forgiveness, Lord God. Bless that marriage give you thanks for the simple things in life, the things that bring uh, joy and happiness, and we especially today think of the sports teams that we have, for the ability to throw ourselves into that and, and to enjoy simple times watching sports. Thank you for that, Lord God. Help all of us to find ways to calm, to find peace, to relax, Lord God, uh, and not to worry, but to trust, Lord God, that you are in control of all things. Finally, we pray for Casey's friends whose house is in danger. Pray that you would send rain or snow or whatever means necessary, Lord God, to put the fires out, to take away the smoke, to save Casey's friend's house. Teach them also, Lord God, that even, even through all of this, that you are in control and that you love and that you will make all things work. Lord, we bring you all these prayers and we join together in the prayer that you have taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
from Jan Lohr. Where'd she go? No. All right. Her sister and her brother both asked for prayers for Jay as well. We didn't. Thank you for your request. Miss Jay, your sister and your brother both requested prayers for you, just so you know. I also noticed that I uh, preached exceptionally long today, huh? Uh, you guys okay with, uh, or should we do, should we do commercial, uh, you, you know, at the end of the commercials, there's the people who, who tell you all the things that the medicine can do to you. You want to go that speed? We're going to prepare ourselves to receive Christ's body and blood. All right. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and grace. Praise be to the Lord, for, to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God, and the authority of his Christ, to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Christ on the night he was betrayed took bread when he had given thanks he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body which is given for you and he took the cup gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink from it all of you this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me peace of the Lord be with you always Amen. Amen. time I invite forward all those who have prepared themselves to receive Christ's body and blood. If you haven't had time to really think through what's happening or you don't really understand what's going on, I encourage you to wait and talk to me after the service. I'd love to talk to you about that. This is a big deal. So if you are ready to receive Christ's body and blood, I invite you forward. All things are now ready. Join in the hymn that's printed in the program. Jesus paid it all uh, during the distribution. body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. And drink, this is the true blood of our Lord Jesus, poured out for you for the forgiveness of sin. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus strengthen you, and keep you in the true faith for life everlasting. You are at peace with the Almighty God. All of your sins are forgiven. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord Jesus, given unto death for your sin. And drink. This is the true blood of our Lord Jesus, poured out for you for the forgiveness of sin. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus strengthen you, keep you in the true faith until life everlasting. You are at peace with God. Your sins are forgiven.
Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord Jesus, given into death for all of your sins. And drink. This is the true blood of our Lord Jesus. body of our Lord Jesus, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. And drink. This is the true blood of our Lord Jesus, poured out for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus strengthen you and keep you in the true faith until life everlasting. Heart at peace with the Almighty God. Sins are forgiven.
the joy of that forgiveness, let's stand and join together in the one who verse of peace. harmony with one another and serve the Lord with joy. Lord bless you and keep you. Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you his peace. Good morning everyone. Welcome to Living Hope Lutheran Church. Good morning to everyone out there joining us online. Glad you could join together. One more song, but before we sing it, just take a moment to, sh to greet each other. We're going to say, shake each other's hands. But give each other LV. of announcements. One is just a reminder about the changes in our worship schedule. So today is a mask required Sunday. Um, next Sunday will be medically exempt Sunday. And that what that means is that you medically are exempt from having to wear a mask. So in an effort to try and serve everyone in the congregation, we're going to be alternating back and forth. If you ever get confused about what a certain Sunday is, you can go to our website and there's a nice little chart that'll tell you what's happening on that Sunday. It's, I know some people charts and graphs, you know, our head starts to spin and this is a very simple one. You, we, I could even figure it out. So, um, yeah. All right, um, congregational meeting. We are required to renew our loan with the church extension fund every few years. And it is time for us to renew that loan. And so it is required that we approve uh, uh, renewing the loan with them through a congregational meeting. So immediately following the service, we will at 1030, we will have a meeting in here to officially approve the loan as a congregation. I'm not sure how long the meeting will take, but I would be surprised if it was longer than 10 minutes. But I'd love to have you guys stay so that we can, one item on the agenda, just need to get it done, okay? Uh, Thanksgiving baskets, angel tree for children and stuff is coming. Sharing Hope is letting you know the dates are in there. Um, E-Team 1, Evangelism Team 1, writing things to people who move into our area. If you love to write notes, speak with Jay. She's working on that. Um, uh, I will be gone uh, tomorrow and Tuesday and Wednesday to a pastor's conference. Uh, catechism students, you still have class. I will just teach you from Utah. <laughs> The joy of Zoom meetings is I can be gone and still teach you, huh? Yeah. So uh, we will still have confirmation class tomorrow, but I'm at a pastor's conference for the next couple of days. I'll still get email, phone calls, everything else like that. But just so you know where I will be. Um, last, uh, we, lay, we spread two tons. I think it was two tons of topsoil yesterday. If you go out and look around the sign, you'll see some nice soil spread out there. We're going to be putting sod in most likely this coming week. A uh, special thank you to Jim Jordan and, who, and his friend Chuck. Uh, Chuck is not a member of our church, but he brought over a, a, me a mechanical wheelbarrow or a diesel-powered wheelbarrow and a, and a front-loader kind of machine, and it was fun. Made moving dirt kind of fun. So thank you especially to Chuck. I don't know if you're watching Chuck, but thank you for that. Um, I think that's all the announcements that I have. 
Anything else that I forgot? Yes, sir. We'll start a separate uh, live stream for the meeting. Okay. All right, so a separate live stream. So those of you, it will be live streamed. Uh, this one will end and we'll start another one at 1030. Is that correct? Yes, All right. Anything else? All right. Well, Lord's blessings on your week. We're going to join together in our last song. It's God be with you till we meet again. Sort of has a new meaning in this, the age of COVID. But let's stand and join together in, uh, in this song.